Today on The Domestic Geek, we are celebrating Halloween, and I'm gonna share tips and techniques for getting your pumpkin perfect every single time. The jack-o'-lantern might just be the single most iconic symbol of Halloween, but where does the pumpkin carving tradition come from? I thought you'd never ask. The tradition actually started in Ireland and Scotland. Folks there would carve lanterns out of turnips or potatoes and leave them on the doorstep on All Hallows' Eve. This would help ward off evil spirits. As the tradition moved to the US, they realized that pumpkins were more readily available and much easier to carve. Whether you're picking your pumpkin from a patch or from the grocery store, there are a couple things you want to look for. First, of course, is a nice bright color. You also want to look out for any visible bruising, and if you see any, you can choose another. Second, you want to look at the stem. Now, any sort of molding at the stem will definitely tell you your pumpkin's going to decompose a lot faster. You want to pick a pumpkin with a nice flat bottom, so once it's carved, it will sit nicely on your doorstep. And finally, the larger the pumpkin, the easier it's going to be to carve. So keep that in mind when you're selecting. Once you've got your pumpkin home, it's really important to clean it. Now, some people online recommend soaking it in a sink full of water with a teaspoon full of bleach to kill germs. I like using a little bit of vinegar on a cloth and just giving it a once over. The idea is the fewer germs living on the pumpkin, the more slowly it will decompose. All right, so we've given our pumpkin a little bit of a bath and now it's time to clean out the inside. Now, you can get one of these kits fairly inexpensively from the grocery store or a big box store, but I prefer just to use tools I have at home. A serrated steak knife works really well, and of course, a metal spoon for scooping. Now, there are two schools of thought as to how to get into a pumpkin. Some suggest going in through the bottom, which makes a lot of sense, especially if you're using a real candle. That way, you can put it on a flat surface and then sort of lift the pumpkin on top of it. But I am a purist. I like to kick it old school, so I always go in from the top. You want to use a serrated steak knife and enter at a 45 degree angle. That way your lid won't fall right in once you try to replace it. Through the magic of YouTube, I actually already have one done. <gasps> Can you believe it? When you're done, your surface is going to look a little something like this. Now, not only do you want to cut the top right off and give it a really good clean out, you want to create a little chimney in the back in case you're using a real candle. This will give a place for the heat to escape. Now it's time to get carving. And of course, through the magic of YouTube, I've already carved a pumpkin. It's truly amazing. Now, please don't covet my amazing artistic prowess in this design. Once your pumpkin's carved, to keep the edges from shriveling up, all you need to do is take a barbecue brush and a little bit of vegetable oil and just line the edges of your design. This will prevent the edges from shriveling up. Now that we have our devilish design, it is time to illuminate it because of course it wouldn't be a jack-o'-lantern without some kind of light. You have a couple options. I got these little artificial lights from the dollar store, totally cheap and cheerful, and they even do sort of an authentic flicker, which I thought was great. But like I said before, I am a pumpkin purist, so I like to use an actual candle. Just make sure you keep it in a little glass inside the pumpkin so you don't start a fire. And one final tip, if you really wanna take your jack-o'-lantern to the next level, you can actually turn it into an air freshener. So once the candle's in, all you need to do is take an autumn spice, say pumpkin pine spice or cinnamon, and then just sprinkle a little on the lid of the pumpkin. Once it goes on, the heat will create the most amazing smell that will totally remind you of the fall. And there you have it, a jack-o'-lantern worthy of your doorway. Do you have a Halloween trick you can't live without? Please share it in the comment section below. I'm Sarah Lynn and you're watching The Domestic Geek on Coral. If you love Halloween, be sure to subscribe. If you want more household tips and tricks, you should follow me on Twitter, at Sarah Lynn Koshan. We'll see you next time. Happy Halloween!